Hi guys, good morning. In this video, we are going to see the problem number of zero filled sub arrays. Problem statement is exactly as what the problem says. Um, it is saying that we are given an integer called as nums and return the number of sub arrays filled with zero. So sub array is an array, a part of an array which is continuous. So let's say if we have this something as zero zero, let's say if in initially you have one, two, three, zero, 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 four, five, six, zero, zero, eight, nine, zero. And again, let's say nine, eight, zero, zero. So basically this zero, zero, zero in the here, this zero, zero, this zero, and this zero, zero, it will form a continuous sub array of zeros. So if we have this sub array of zeros, what do you think? How many number of, see, if you have this sub array and you know, okay, it's zero, zero, zero. What do you think? How many sub array from this particular portion you can get? One is that out of these three zeros, one is that you are standing here and you choose only the initial zero, which means the zero right here. Or another option is if you're standing at the next index, index right here, you choose one zero from here and one group from previous one and here because you're standing here and you're considering only the back portion whatsoever you had in the back. Now, if you are standing, let's say in the next place, which is third index, let's say this, and then you will see, okay, one option is this, only this, one option is one and the back one, other option is back three simple as that as simple as that so if you are standing if you have have a group of zeros then how many number of sub arrays in that group of zeros can you form one is by taking that and if you are at the next index then have that index which is here and also the previous one which is this and after that if you are the third index then have that index i equal to two i equal to two, two, two and one and i equal to zero one and two all three so at each index you can find number of sub arrays corresponding to that index let's see the example very quickly first uh, so if we have this array something as one three zero zero two zero zero four then number of sub arrays from the particular segment of this zero zero will be nothing but half the first zero half the next zero and have both the zeros which is three number of same for the next zero zero segment which is also three so we get the answer as six let's see the next one pretty quickly it's zero 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 as we saw earlier also how we got it so firstly it's standing at the first index itself got one zero okay standing at the next index and the previous index got again two sub arrays then if you are in the third index then standing at the third index which is this third and the last one which is this third last and last which is this in total we get six sub arrays and for two group which is the next one which is in pink it is just three as showed in the previous one also so it is six plus three which is nine so we get the nine here as you can see there is no zero at all so no sub arrays we can form thus the answer is zero so you easily thought okay what we need to do we need to find continuous sub arrays of zeros right if by anyhow i can get to know okay how many sub arrays can be formed by the group of these zeros? How many sub arrays can be formed by the group of the next group of zeros? Then I can just add all the answers and I can just get my final answer, which is nine. Right, as simple as that. Same we will do in this problem. We have, we have a group. Let's say the group is made of zero, zero, zero. Let's say by anyhow, Firstly, let's say by anyhow, I find, uh, I, I, I got to know, okay, I have a group of zeros. Now I have to find how many number of sub arrays can be formed by that group of zeros of sub array, which means I have this group of zeros. How many such sub arrays can be formed? In this case, it is six, but how? As simple as that, if you are standing at the first index, then I'll just only consider, okay, what has come previously. Okay, only one has come. I'll just have it. If you're standing at the next index, I'll just say, okay, I'll take this and also both of them. The last one also. I can take it because the last one also also zero. If I'm standing in third index, I'll take only the third one, which means the first one. And how about the first and the last one? 
How about all three of n? Because all three are zeros, right? So by this, at every index, I can get to know. If I'm standing here, it will be nothing but one. Here it will be two. Here it will be three. By just grabbing the previous and alsos. And it is the whole intuition of this problem that for every group of sub arrays of zeros, I'll just compute because see, it's ultimately what? 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is nothing but n into n plus 1 by 2. So I can just, if I know the size of this particular group, I can just compute maybe n into n plus 1 by 2. I can, I can just find my answer. Let's see the approach pretty quickly. It's so the first very brute force way. I will just go on and find every sub arrays in O of n square. And to check if it is the group of zeros only, I have to again iterate on that sub array to check, okay, every element should be zero. So it's again a O of n on that num on that sub array. And to find n square sub arrays, it takes n square time. So it'll be O of n cube. It's pretty worse. Let's see another thing. I just go on to find only the zero sub arrays, which means I will not find every sub array. I'll just start from a zero one where the index, where the value is zero. And then I tr try to check, okay, until the next zero is there, which means I'll just try to check, okay, one, two, three, four, then again, five, six, seven, then again, um, eight, nine, and then again, 10. Like this, I'll just try to find for every part, which means every sub array, I'll just try to compute only the zero ones. With this, I can just get n square, but still, it's pretty worse. And now we'll just land on to this thing that, okay, we know if we have a group of, let's say, size three, then everything, which means one can also be possible, which means by first index, you can have one, but in the next index, you, you, like, you, you can have two. By the next index, you can have three. So if we have in total three elements, so it is nothing but n into n plus one by two. And same I have mentioned here that if we have our, it's a group of three, it's a group of two. I just made that group, which is three and two. With this, I can easily find what by three group, how many number of zeros sub I can make. It is nothing but six. By this group of two, I can make a sub arrays of three, which is just n to n plus one by two. We showed because we can get one plus two plus three, which is nothing but continuous sum of n elements. And thus, the space and time is both of n. Why space is of n? Because we are storing this group size in another array. So, this space is being taken by this. And thus, the space is of n. But do you actually think it's important to store this space? Like if you just go and cl see clearly, then you are just you, to see, to get to know about the size of this sub array, still you would need something like start and end. And still you can easily see that you are moving from this start, like start is here and i equal to zero, start is here, i equal to one, start is here, i equal to two. Why this start and i equal to two, you can get to know the size of this sub array. Right. So why not? Why not put it in my answer anytime you go, which means that here I'm standing. I'll just add in my answer as one here. I'm standing. I'll add because in my answer currently is one. I'll just add another two because here I can get two because I know that. Okay. Start is here. I equal to one. So the difference is two. I can get a two because it just correspond to this two. I can easily get it. So I can just add a two in my answer. So my answer will, will get three. Now here I equal to ans and start is zero. So I can easily see it's a length of three. So I can just add a three, which is corresponding to this. I can just add my answer six. So I don't need to store the value, which means earlier I was storing this length, which was three to get this whole sum, which is one plus two plus three. Now I can easily compute that one plus two plus three when I'm going on in the array itself. So I don't need to store it. And that's the whole intuition to get to what we are right now, which is O of n time and a space of O of one. If I'm standing at j equal to zero and i equal to zero, j is always point to a start of the zero index, which means that whatsoever value is zero, j will point to that location. And I will just keep on moving. If j is here, i is here. Okay. Both will say, okay, now the element is one. Well, like one element is there, which is continuous zeros. I will move because J will always stay. Okay. I, I'm staying, I'm staying until my next non-zero element come. My now 
I will move, which means my I is here, my J is here. Same as what we saw as start and I earlier. Now it will say, okay, in between us, there are two elements, which means that I can make two sub arrays out of it. So a two will be added. It's nothing but I minus J plus one, which is the length. And now J is also still standing at here. I standing here. They will ask, okay, what's the length of this whole area between us? It's, it will say three because elements are three. So it will just add a three for these three sub arrays which can be formed standing at the ith index. It is standing at the i equal to one. It is standing at i, I equal to zero. And thus it's a whole intuition that I just keep on adding this answer which is i minus j plus one for every of this range. Now let's see the code pretty quickly. We will also dry run on the code. So if you don't understand okay how this code because code is very short and concise. That's the reason I have written like the concise code as concise as possible, although we can have ma like many if conditions and all that stuff, but still it's the most concise. So I will just dry run also on that thing. Firstly, we just initialize my i and j as zero. Now my i will always move ahead, always move ahead, but my j will only move ahead when I get a non-zero element because my j has the responsibility to find okay what's the starting range of that zero sub array but let's say if another element which comes which is non-zero then i have to okay see okay now the zero is not required anymore here let's move on let's try to move on to the next location where the zero can start so i'll just try to move this to i plus one so that okay it just keeps on going to the next zero location if it reach so i will just make him stay right there and then every time i'll just keep on adding i minus j plus one now you will say aryan you are adding every time, which means for every non-zero element also. What is this? How is this possible? Like you only need to add it for the zero ones, right? Yeah, correct. I only need to add it for zero ones. So why are you adding this? I'm not adding. Like it's it seems like it's being added, but it will always for non-zero element, it will always result in a zero value. I'll show how. Let's quickly dry run this particular code. Firstly, my j is zero, my i is zero. Cool, very cool. Uh, now I get a zero element, which means my j will not increase. So my i will. So and firstly, my answer was initially zero. It got to one because I just got one element. Now my i is one and my j is still zero because I am not. I have not got a like non-zero element. So now the answer will increase by this length, which is two. So answer got three. Cool. Now still my j is zero, my i equal to two. Then I just get answer of six because now the elements have come, which is three. Now, as you can see that now my now my next time my i is three. Oh, it's a non-zero element, which means my j can't stay here now. No, so I have to bring j to a location. I can also bring at i. I can also I can just bring j, j, j to any location, but I just brought it such that it is i plus one. Why such that? Earlier I was adding i minus j plus one, which is I was adding i minus j plus one, which is nothing but i plus one minus j. So if I want that this result should be zero, so I should bring my j equal to i plus one. So I just did my j as nothing but i plus one, so that it will always result in a value which is zero, and thus my answer will stay the same. If it would have been another element, let's say three would also have been after two, then my I would have pointed at the next iteration to I equal to uh, like I equal to four, which is three element. Then still I have pointed because it is a non-zero element. So I would have po pointed it to the next location, which is G equal to five, which will ultimately give my value as zero and a zero will be added to the answer. That's the reason I was just adding my rest for every i because ultimately for non-zero element it will always result in a zero and after that i can just move on my i and j my i is at a zero element so my j will always stay right here you don't have to move at all i'll find value which is one i'll add to the value my answer became seven i have this j i'll just move oh i'll just move i my j will not get affected because it's at a zero location it is happy it is fine and my i is also at a zero location so it will just find the value which is two and then answer increase by two and thus ultimately you can because you have reached the end of the array my i is done you have reached the answer which is nine so you can have nine such sub arrays so you saw for every corresponding i i just try to find okay for the bunch of group of zeros this i how much it can affect my sub arrays and that's the whole intuition and the solution of this problem so i hope that you guys liked it if yes then 
do hit the like button it helps you motivate a lot and see you in the next video until then goodbye take care